CreateLab Visual Programmer is a very easy to use programming environment that has been used by kids as young as 8. It was originally developed at the Carnegie Mellon Create Lab for use with Hummingbird, a robotics kit for building robots out of arts and crafts materials. It has since been adapted to Finch. The Visual Programmer is somewhat unique in how users create programs. Users begin by creating expressions which define the operation of one or more outputs. After creating several expressions, they can then build a sequence or program that links output states together and adds the ability to use sensors and loops to create complexity. Consider this simple example. In the first expression, Finch is backing up with a red LED. In the second expression, Finch is moving forward and the LED is green. A simple sequence that links these together has Finch alternate between expressions in a loop. Let's begin by installing the software. To install, go to finchrobot.com and go to the software menu to Visual Programmer. Hit the Launch button and uh, a download dialog will probably pop up downloading Visual Programmer Finch.jnlp. Click on this to download, install, and launch the application. It will then download and then you'll be able to choose where to save it. In this case, I'm going to save it to Applications and then it will launch the program immediately. So make sure to plug in your Finch. Note that you don't have to launch from the website again once it's been installed once. Once the software is launched, you'll be able to control outputs from the Expression Builder screen. To control an output, uh, simply check the checkbox of that output. Here I'm changing the uh, Finch Beak LED from red to green to blue. I can also control multiple outputs, so here I'm going to enable motor 1 and motor 2, that's the left and right motor respectively, and I'm going to set them both to full forward. I can hit the stop to make the motor stop, I can also make them go backwards, and again I'm stopping the motors. I can control the buzzer, you can change how long um, the buzz lasts by changing the duration uh, text box. And then I can also choose what note. And I can also use computer audio. So here I can use the same text-to-speech engine that is available in the Finch Java package. So it says, hello everyone. I can also play a number of uh, clips and also add new clips to this library. So here I'm going to make my uh, computer play a, a sound of a dog barking, and I can also play tones on the computer. So now that I've shown you how to control all of the Finch's outputs, let's talk about making and saving expressions. So here I have an expression where the motors are off and the LED is off, and I'll save this as uh, motor LED off. And then I'm going to make an expression uh, where both motors are going forward at 60% speed. And I'm also turning on the green LED. I'll call this forward green. I'll make another expression to go backwards. So set the LED to red and set both motors to about 60% in reverse. I'll call this one backwards red. Then I'll create um, two expressions for turning. So here I'm setting the left motor to negative to go backwards at 60% speed, the right to go forwards at 60% speed. So this will turn left and I've set the LED to cyan, so left cyan. And then finally, I'll do the reverse. Left motor to 60%, right to um, backwards 60%, so this is a right turn. I'll call this right blue. So now I've made five expressions that control motion in four directions and an off expression. Now that I have those expressions, let me show you how to build simple sequences with them. So first we go to the Sequence Builder tab 
and then we can just drag and drop expressions from the expressions pane at, at the right hand side. So here I've done forward and back and I hit play and I'm also looping this or I can choose not to loop it. Now in this case my robot's just going to keep going backward at the end of the second expression. So now I'm going forward, back, and then I'm turning off the motors. I can also change how long each expression takes by uh, clicking on the clock symbol. So now I've changed that to 0.5 and I've changed the last one to 0 because I just want it to um, turn the motors and LED off. So that's a simple sequence. Let's now use the counter block to build a loop. So here I'm going to drag the counter block from the structures pane. And I'm going to drag in um, backward and forward. I'll go forward first, then backward. And I'll change the number of iterations to 5 from 1. And I'll also turn off my motors at the end of the loop. So if I hit play now, the, ro the finch is going to go forward, back, forward, back, forward, back five times. And then at the end of the loop, uh, it'll turn off its motors and its LED. And I'm going to save this as back and forth. Our next step is adding sensors. So in this following example, we're going to use sensors to create um, a robot that can avoid obstacles. So here I'll pull the sensor structure from the structures pane and you can see there's a lot of different available sensor types or sensor feedback. I'm going to choose is obstacle detected and there are two ports one and two. One is the left obstacle sensor, two is the right. Note these uh, structures basically work as if-else uh, statements. So I've just dragged um, forward green into if if there's no obstacle detected go forward and turn green and if there is an obstacle detected go backwards and then turn left. Now I'm daisy chaining a second um, sensor structure and this is for the right obstacle sensor. So here again I'm putting forward green in the no track and backward and then turn right in the yes track. These structures are nice because they always show you what the current sensor value is even when your program isn't running. And I'm changing um, the forward green expression time to zero so that it'll check the sensor as quickly as possible in, if uh, no obstacle is detected. And I'm also changing the time to turn to half a second because one second is too much of a turn and then I'm going to loop through this uh, forever. So if I hit play, you can see it's basically um, stuck on no. I've just put my hand in front of the left obstacle sensor. And now I'm putting my hand in front of the right obstacle sensor. And you can see it's going into that um, track. All right, so I'm going to save this and call it obstacle avoider. The last thing I want to cover in this tutorial is to show you that you can insert sequences into other sequences and build up a hierarchy. So here what I'm doing is I'm creating uh, a number of expressions uh, that just deal with the Finch's beak LED. So I just created one that makes the LED red and I'll leave it as an exercise to you to create ones that are green, blue, white, and just turn the LED off. So here I'm dragging those expressions into a counter structure. So I'm going to go from blue to green to red to white. And then after my counter, I'll turn off the LED. Note the difference between the LED off expression, which just turns off the LED, and the motor LED off expression that we created earlier, which turns off both the motors and the LED. Uh, I'm changing the um, time for each expression to 0.1 seconds, and the last one can be 0 seconds. 
and I'm changing the number of iterations to 5. So I'm going to save this. Well, I'm going to play it to test it first. It's basically flashing the LED different colors quickly, so I'm going to call it Flash. So this is a sequence. It now shows up in our sequences pane on the right-hand side. And now I'm going to create a new sequence, which uses a sensor. And in this case, I'll use the um, isBeakUp feedback. And right now I have my finch sitting with the beak up. So it's pointed at yes. I'm going to drag the flash sequence into the no track. And I'll just put LED off in the yes track. Or I could even put nothing at all in here. I'm going to run the yes track over and over again, but leave the no track to um, continue. And so what this is going to do is uh, I've just moved my finch so that it's level, and so it flashed its LED, and then the program stopped, because there was nothing to do after that. And that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this screencast, and happy programming.